Hello everybody, welcome back to yet another video of Fikrnaut.com. Now, Fikrnaut from Studies. So today we're going to be studying about a very, very important and fun chapter. That is carbon and its compounds. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. So carbon is something that exists in our life, literally in everything. I think you all agree with me on this. And I'll be proving it to you throughout this chapter. Why and why not? Today we'll be covering only the crystalline forms and the amorphous forms will be the, will basically be in the next video. So for today, we talk about the crystalline forms of carbon for the ones who are no, new over here may not know what crystalline forms are and I'll tell you that in just a bit. So let's start with this. So carbon has a symbol of C as most of you know because it's carbon and what is there is the C. So it is C. So carbon that is the symbol right the atomic number is six as in the number of electrons that are there and or or the protons whatever is the atomic number so that means it is six the mass number is protons plus neutrons protons we already know it's six six plus six equals to twelve so the mass number is twelve electronic con And the electronic configuration is since the atomic number is 6 will be 2 and 4 as in the inner shell as the K shell will have 2 electrons and the outer shell as the L shell will have 1, 2, 3 and 4 electrons. I'm sorry for my not so perfect circles and electrons but I think you understand right. So with six protons and six neutrons. So the valency can either be four plus or four minus because either you can take away the four electrons or you can add four more electrons. So it depends. So we just say the valency is four for now. Now let's go on to the introduction of this chapter. So carbon is one of the most widely distributed elements on the earth. All living things, plants and animals contain carbon. So I think you all can agree with me on this, that carbon is one of the things that is most widely distributed, as in it is used in almost everything, you know, be it sh grains, pulses, sugar, tea, coffee, paper, wood, kerosene, cotton, drugs and dyes, they are all made up of carbon. So be it any of these, they're all made up of carbon. And a little English background on carbon will be that carbon is um, actually derived from a Latin word called carbo, which means coal. So now talking about the occurrence of carbon, carbon is found in the earth's crust. It is found in both free and combined states as in carbon can just be alone on its own. Yeah, carbon can just be alone on its own or it can be with some other element. It can be plus something, probably hydrogen, nitrogen, anything at all. So it is it, it, it occurs in both free and combined states. One more special speciality added to carbon. And um, in free states, it occurs as coal, diamond and graphite. That means coal, over here, coal, diamond. Both of them only and only contain carbon. They don't contain anything else but the one and only carbon, as we say. So it all, it, literally all it has is only and only carbon. And... In combined states, carbon occurs in the form of carbon dioxide. That means there's carbon and there's oxygen. So oxygen is the other element that is with carbon. Petroleum and natural gas, it's carbon plus one more element. Then let's go up. Four nutrients like carbohydrates, fats, proteins and vitamins. Carbonates like limestone, marble, chalk and washing soda. And fibers like rain, cotton and silk so all of this has some amount of carbon in it that's for sure and it has one more element joined with it like in carbon dioxide there's oxygen with it hmm? 
in carbohydrates there must be some other element with it so there are different different elements like in washing soda it's c h o there is also hydrogen there is also oxygen right so all of these are something what you call as combined states so that is why we say that carbon can exist alone also it can be good enough alone it'll be like i am good enough alone if you leave me alone i'll be good if you put me and pair with, pair me with someone i'll be good so carbon is the best student you can ever get right it always listens to you now over here let's a question arises of critical thinking is life possible without carbon i want to ask you guys is life possible without carbon after all these combined states and free states i'm giving you a clue after all the free and combined states of carbon that i just told you guys i want you guys to tell me if life is possible without carbon so put it in the comment section below so d compounds of carbon hydrogen and their derivatives are called as organic compounds so if we talk about only carbon and hydrogen so carbon so of course is a combined state if we only talk about carbon plus hydrogen this means these two together will be known as something called as organic compounds organic compounds if one of them is not there it will either occur in a free state or it just wouldn't be called as called as an organic compound why if it, it would be only one it would probably be an organic element but it's two or more elements that form a compound that is why you call call it as a organic compound so the branch of chemistry that deals with the study of organic compounds is called as organic chemistry now you all may know this and that in higher grades you have something called organic chemistry especially if you have a younger brother sorry an older brother or an older sibling or if you have a younger brother studying in grade 12 definitely you you were so past grade 12 so you know this organic chemistry is a stream of chemistry that you get in 11th 12th and you study about it more about these organic compounds just as i said carbon and hydrogen it's a really large study we just looking into it a little bit you know getting a brief about it let's just get ready for our higher grades right so some organic compounds used in our day to day lives are as follows food nutrients like proteins fats and carbohydrates hmm? then fibers like wool cotton silk you know all of these are organic compounds why because they have hydrogen but they also have carbon and both of them are together so fibers like wool cotton silk and nylon okay let's move on to the next page yes fuels like petrol kerosene diesel lpg and cng bakelite pvc polythene and melamine detergents and soaps paper perfumes and disinfectants so all of these are a huge huge part of the organic chemistry branch and these are called as organic compounds okay so a little fun fact we take a break for a little fun fact that carbon fibers are really very strong okay then those of even steel if you guys know if you have steel glasses we normally use steel glasses at our home right so that you know while drinking water or anything you don't really destroy anything that is why you use steel glasses so carbon fibers are even stronger than that but are lighter in weight so it's like a win win situation that is why we use it in rackets tennis rackets so that you know it's easier for the tennis players to play because you imagine if you get a um, say a a steel rod a steel rod a very heavy thick steel rod which looks like a test tube right now but trust me it's a steel rod just imagine a steel rod and on the other hand you get a hmm let's say a piece of paper or a piece like a hard cardboard which hits very well what would you want to play with this which will literally hurt your hand or this that will hit very well and not hurt your hand definitely this right similarly in this case also people prefer carbon fibers because they're stronger they won't break easily it's a it's worth the money because if it just breaks easily what's the point and it's also lighter so that you know the tennis players their hand 
does not hurt. So compounds other than organic compounds are called inorganic compounds. The branch of chemistry that deals with the study of inorganic compounds is known as inorganic chemistry. Okay, I think this is this opposite. Organic compounds, organic chemistry, inorganic compounds is inorganic chemistry. So compounds like carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, carbonates, bicarbonates contain carbon, but they they are not organic. They are inorganic compounds. Now, this is a little tricky question. Why do you think they are not in they are inorganic compounds? Well, I think the smart ones among you have must guessed it. I think all of you are smart. So all of you must have guessed it that hydrogen is missing in all of them. Carbon monoxide is only CO. Carbon dioxide is CO2. So none of them have hydrogen. That is why it is known as inorganic compounds. Let's look at this table and let's take a brief of it, right? Methane, CH4. This is organic. Why? Because there's carbon, there's hydrogen. Butane, C4H10, carbon and hydrogen. Ethan, C2 plus H4. Again, carbon plus hydrogen is there. C2H2, ethane. Then benzene will be C6H6, carbon and hydrogen. Then naphthalene, C10H8, methyl, CH3OH. Now, even though there's O, even though there is O, it will still be considered as an organic compound because there is carbon and oxygen and there is CH3, which is a combined state of carbon and oxygen. So we know we call that as a organic compound. C2H5OH, again C2H5, right? Acetic acid CH3, CH3 again combined state, HC combined state, HC again, combined state, and COOH2. Now, even though there's OOH, it will still be known as an organic compound. Now, if you ask why, because there's only oxygen. If there's oxygen, it is known as organic compounds. In middle, if there are oxygen elements, it will be still known as an organic compound. So, oxygen doesn't create an issue over here. It's, it's, it's a nice kid, right? It's a nice student. Then again, glucose and uh, sucrose, CH, CH. Now let's go on to some inorganic compounds. CO2, carbon dioxide, no, there's no hydrogen. Monoxide, no hydrogen. CaCO3, no hydrogen. Na2CO3, no hydrogen. All of these are wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> Zn, uh, ZnCO3, no hydrogen. So again, across COCO3, no hydrogen, NaHCO3. Now, even though there is HCO3, and I told that um, with the oxygen there, it will still be known as an organic compound. But over here, there is sodium as well. There is sodium. That is why it cannot be known as an organic compound, and it will be known as an inorganic compound. Then calcium bicarbonate before that. Yeah, calcium bicarbonate, Ca. HCO3 again there's calcium that is by then in calcium will be CA that is by it won't be known as an organic compound then CS2 again definitely there is no hydrogen CIC no hydrogen HT H2CO3 now when this normally people ask why this is not an organic compound because I said if there is oxygen it can be an organic compound but think about this oxygen sorry hydrogen is adding with CO3 which is already in a combined state of carbonate which is CO3 so how can it be an organic compound it cannot because CO3 does not have hydrogen even if you hide hydrogen in it it'll become carbonic acid HC won't be together no it won't be together it is a CO3 is in a combined state of carbonate and it is adding with the Hydrogen, that is why you cannot call it as an organic compound. That is why it is an inorganic compound. Now, let's move on to the allotropes of carbon. Now, what does allotrope mean? So, the phenomenon or existence of an element in two or more different forms that have the same chemical but different physical property is called allotropy. So, 
the existence of an element so when an element let's take carbon itself okay carbon is an element i think all of you agree so the phenomenon or existence of an element in two or different forms so if carbon has this is one form and two forms and these forms have same chemical properties definitely because they are wholly made of carbon but different physical properties why because some may be in a square shape some may be in a rectangle shape physical properties it is called as allotropy and uh, the forms which come under are called as allotropes so if you talk about carbon you call them as allotropes of carbon given rightly over here that is why you know, call it as allotropes of carbon so the difference in physical properties of different allotropes of an element is due to their different structures so some element that show allotropy are oxygen sulfur carbon and phosphorus this is a point to note because normally a lot of mcq questions come over here so oxygen sulfur and phosphorus these are the elements or these are the elements that show allotropy that means oxygen has two or different forms so if you talk about it oxygen has two or different forms two or more different forms sulfur has two or more different forms carbon has two forms phosphorus has two or different forms right so like that so the allotropes of carbon me yes so the allotropes of carbon are of two types as i said earlier crystalline and non crystalline or amorphous so i let's just call it as crystalline and amorphous forms of carbon in this chapter or this video we're only and only going to study about crystalline forms and yes we'll only study about that if you all want amorphous forms don't worry post it in the comment section below and i will make a video on that okay now moving on to crystalline forms so when carbon atoms are arranged in a definite geometric pattern in a plane surface it is known as crystalline forms and diamond diamond graphite and fullerenes are crystalline forms of carbon so this means that definite geometric pattern what does this mean Geo geometry is maths right we're taking a little maths over here so when we talk about ge geometry and when we talk about definite patterns it means it'll be a pattern which is made up of straight lines and it's a definite it's it's actually a shape is this a shape if i tell you what shape is this will you be able to identify it definitely not because it is not a shape so that is why we say definite geometric patterns as in it is present in a shape which is called a shape like a hexagon a square a diamond so this is a definite geometric shape why because it's one two three four five six it's a hexagon now if i ask you is this a geometric shape yes it is why because it is a one two three four five it's a pentagon so was this it's a square a rectangle so all of these are definite geometric patterns but non crystalline forms why do we call it non crystalline forms definitely yes as i was saying why do we call it as a non crystalline forms well definitely because it is the opposite of crystalline forms so if you just remember crystalline forms which is definite geometric pattern non crystalline forms definition would be the exact opposite would be the exact opposite so if crystalline forms of carbon suggests that the carbon atoms are present in a definite geometric pattern in non crystalline forms the definition would say that it is arranged in an unsystematic pattern and it is called as non crystalline or amorphous form so this is the definition of amorphous or non crystalline form of carbon some examples are coke charcoal coal they all are non crystalline or amorphous forms of carbon so the physical properties when we talk about this the physical properties of all of the carbons are different however when they are heated in the presence of oxygen they give carbon dioxide and heat why because as i said they are allotropes of carbon they only and only contain carbon that is why you can also say they are in a free state of carbon they only exist in carbon all they have is carbon 
they have nothing else all they have is carbon maybe some impurities but we are assuming that they only and only have carbon that is why each and every metal if you heat it with the presence of oxygen which is o2 will give co2 this is the common formula you all know and since we are saying that they only and only have carbon in them we will say that it is carbon dioxide right that is that is what we say so now let's start full fledged into the crystalline forms of carbon and let's get to know more about it so the three important crystalline forms of carbon are diamond graphite and fullerenes what are they diamond graphite and fullerenes diamonds are something i think you all know because diamonds are a woman's best friend right and diamonds is something everyone knows so diamond is the purest form of carbon this is an important point and underline this diamond is the purest form of carbon it is made up of carbon atoms only it is formed in south africa russia australia usa namibia and india so normally people may say oh carbon diamonds are all around the world well as of this textbook it says this we don't know if it's true or not but we are assuming that only in these countries fresh pure diamond is made and is cultivated in the other countries it's just exported from one country to another so in india diamonds are found at panna in madhya pradesh and varjakarur in andhra pradesh now let's talk about diamond or natural diamonds right so natural diamonds are formed by the action of high temperature and pressure on carbon so it's it's the is the results of a very very high temperature on and pressure on carbon so when you know we place the diamond under high temperature and pressure at the depth of about 150 150 kilometers under the earth's surface so sometimes you know when volcanic eruptions take place they bring these diamonds to the surface because the diamonds come up and they erupt up with the volcano so if the volcano is like this it'll also erupt up hmm so that is what happens so that is why we say that natural diamonds are formed or they come up due to volcanic eruptions volcanic eruptions push the diamonds up and the diamonds are they come out and that is why we say that diamonds originally are found in only these many countries as of the textbook we don't know how, if it's true but we're assuming but that's we, we are not talking about that right now it's just extra information so some famous natural diamonds are kohinoor i think you all know kohinoor right pit diamond and kolinin so do you know the weight and quality of a diamond it this do you know is right here right so do you know the weight and quality of diamonds are measured in carats one carat equals to 200 mg your mom and dad when they buy diamonds they may say hum this is one carat so we'll probably get one carat of diamonds or two carat of diamonds you've heard them say this right so the weight and quality so the weight and probably the quality of diamonds are measured in carats so it has a special conversion it, it has a special name on how you measure it right so let's read this little box over here so pure diamonds is colorless lustrous and a crystalline solid it has negligible impurities and is very expensive so it is a purest that that is that means it only has carbon and zero zero impurities it has zero impurities it's definitely very expensive as all of you know some diamonds have distinct colors such as red pink blue brown green and tinged yellow these colors are due to the presence of impurities such as traces of metal oxides and salts these colored diamonds are called gems so these these colored diamonds are called gems okay 
which they may have some impurities such as metals. Black diamonds contain copper oxide such as impurity. Although they are not used as gems, they have an important industrial applications. So black diamonds, no, nobody would like to like or get in black diamonds because they just don't look very very inviting and normally people don't buy something called black diamonds which is made up of copper or it has impurities such as copper so that is why they have industrial benefits because diamonds either than looking pretty and being expensive actually have a lot of uses right and that is why you and that is why we also use it in the industrial as as an industrial benefit Now let's talk about artificial diamonds. Something we all or some of the people have gotten into. A lot of, you know, all those sketchy websites who send diamonds. Oh, these are lure diamonds, but they're actually just artificial. So diamonds that are made artificially from graphite. Graphite is subjected to a very high temperature, about 3000 degrees Celsius. So when graphite, okay, it is subjected to a very, very high temperature, 3000 degrees Celsius, not even Fahrenheit, Celsius. And the pressures, and the pressures, pressures, no, I'm sorry, I'm very sorry. And the pressure in the absence of air to form synthetic diamonds. So what happens is graphite, you, I think you all know graphite, right? So it is set up to about 3000 degrees Celsius of temperature. And the pressure, pressure, okay, I'm very sorry. <laughs> and the pressure in the absence of air to form synthetic diamonds. So the temperature is about this much. And the pressure that is applied, it is in the absence of air. Because there is no air while putting the pressure. Because normally, you know, when you apply a pressure on something, there is some presence of air. But while you're making artificial diamonds, there is zero amount of air and the pressure is applied and it forms something called as synthetic diamonds. These diamonds are small in size. They are used in industries as cutting and grinding tools. So, you know, in industries, there are a lot of uses of diamonds, as I said, that we'll come to. But apart from that, if you all don't know, diamonds are very, very, very useful in industries as well. And that's why that's what I said a few minutes ago that Diamonds are out of huge help. That is why they c not everyone, small industries cannot take in diamond because it's very expensive in its price. So they buy artificial diamonds, which probably may be half its price and works as good as diamonds. As you know, the uses of diamonds. That is why they use artificial diamonds because Normal diamonds are really very expensive to buy and people cannot, not a lot of people can afford them, right? Now let's move on to the structure of a diamond. So a diamond has a giant molecular structure. There are four valence electrons in a carbon atom. Each carbon atom in the diamond crystal is linked to four other neighboring carbon atoms by strong bonds and forms a rigid three-dimensional tetrahedral structure. So this means... In a structure of a diamond, or in a diamond structure, there are four carbon atoms. One carbon atom is linked to three other carbon atoms, one, two, and three. And from over here, there'll be, again, one, two, and three, one, two. And then over, th over here also, there'll probably be one more, right? One, two, and three then be one and then all of this is also joined to make one so this is a structure of a diamond so one each carbon atom is in a diamond crystal is linked to four other neighboring carbon atoms and when i mean four one two three and this is also counted as one okay this is also counted as one that is why we say so this is one carbon atom it has one two three and four and this four carbon atoms they have really very strong bonds and they form three rigid okay what do they form they form three very very rigid 
three dimensional tetrahedral structures so this is known as a tetrahedral structure where one carbon atom is joined to four other carbon atoms okay i hope you all understood this so the four surrounding carbon atoms are at the four vertices that is also known as the four corners or the four vertices of a regular tetrahedron so the basic unit of a diamond crystal repeats itself and extends in all direction in result and it extends in all direction and it results in the formation of three dimensional rigid octahedral shape so let me make this very very clear to you guys and very easy for you to understand so there are four surrounding carbon atoms right you know that so there's one two three four and there's five right and these are literally are the four vertices of a regular tetrahedron because it's a tetrahedral shape right so they are um, at present at the corners of the tetrahedron and the basic unit of a diamond crystal repeats itself it again again repeats as i said as i drew a figure it repeats again one more time repeating okay and it joins a whole and it makes a whole diamond structure and it results in the formation of three dimensional rigid octahedral structure so this is one so this is one one two three there are many as such two three probably and this makes a 3d octa okay you probably won't understand yes 3d octahedral structure okay okay i hope you all understood so this is a tetrahedral structure this is one and this is a octahedral structure of many carbon atoms so there's one two again i'm drawing it 3 4 and there are many such this this is only one that probably be 10 that is why they form a 3d structure and they become an octahedral structure okay now let's move on to the properties of diamond aka also the uses of diamonds you know how are diamonds useful in our life and how are they used basically right so it is the hardest known natural substance it is hard due to the presence of three dimensional rigid structures and strong bonds black diamonds are the hardest so why do we say this now you you tell me why do we say they have strong bonds think that is because the carbon atoms you know the one carbon atom that is joined to four other carbon atoms they have such strong bonds between them that makes the whole diamond very very strong and that is why it becomes very hard and extremely rigid okay the hardest are black diamonds why because as i said they are made up of copper they have copper impurities in them that is why they are the hardest of all second it is transparent and colorless and some are colored due to the presence of impurities okay oops i am very very sorry <laughs> yeah so they are transparent and they are colorless and they are what is it yes it is because of the presence of impurities third one it has a high density of 3.5 grams slash centimeter cube this is due to the rigid structure of a diamond now again it has a high density if you if they ask you why is it so rigid and why does it have such a high density again because of its rigid or you can say it has strong bonds or it has strong bonds strong bonds okay then it is a poor conductor of electricity it is because of the absence of free electrons it doesn't have any free electrons going here and there that is why it is a poor conductor of electricity so you know all of this have a very good place in your exam point of view because after all definitely and all of these are properties so if they ask you why is it a poor conductor of electricity because there are no free electrons why is it so rigid rigid because it has a strong bonds one carbon atom is strongly attached to four other carbon atoms so 
or learn this very well okay so the refractive index of diamond is very high when light enters a crystal of diamond it undergoes multiple reflections due to which it sparkles so this means it has a refractive index of diamond so th there is something called the refractive index of diamond okay the refractive index of diamond the, what happens is when a light so let me take this let's take this as a diamond okay i'll make this here so let's take this as a diamond this is a diamond light from here enters the diamond it goes inside the diamond and diamond sparkles this is known as the refractive index so whenever light comes in so if this is the sun light comes into the diamond and it sparkles from everywhere so its refractive index is very 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 high okay and then it has a very high melting point 3550 degrees celsius thus a lot of heat energy is required to break strong bonds so if you want to break a diamond you have to have a very very high heat energy because it has a very high melting point okay that means if you take it at 100 degrees celsius it won't it won't you have to pr probably take it to 4000 degrees celsius so it has a very very high melting point as in it doesn't melt very easily and it is generally insoluble in all solvents okay now let's go on to the main main uses of a diamond this these were the properties but you can also take it as a th th these were uh, sub sub uses mainly properties but you can also call it its uses okay then let's move on to the real real uses of diamond that is first it is jewelry diamonds are used in making jewelry because of their extraordinary brilliant shine i think you all know this so it is used in jewelry that is what i think you all know this it is used in jewelry right right then it is also used in industrial tools such as diamonds are used in you know sharp edged cutters for cutting glass because it is so so sharp that is why you know that as i said industrial in industrial uses people use also artificial diamonds because real diamonds are really very expensive as i said before that is why artificial diamonds come in use over here so they cut very well they cut glasses and in rock drilling equipment for drilling holes in the earth hard rocky layer imagine they're so so hard right then surgical tools such as sharp edged diamonds are used to used by eye surgeons as a surgical tool to remove the cataract from eyes so you cannot use the very very sharp one but a little less so it is used to remove something in your eye which is known as a cataract and um, surgeons eye surgeons they use it then protective windows that diamonds prevent the entry of harmful radiations thus they are used in making protective windows of space satellites but again probably people who are very very rich have uh, diamonds as the windows but we cannot so probably fake diamonds come in use or you know the gems gems come in use with impurities in them but i don't think so pure diamonds i don't think so there are pure, pure diamonds in your windows but yeah space satellites that's why i think um, space satellites it takes a lot of money to make satellites and everything because probably they use a protective layer of diamonds for the uv radiation not to not exactly hit it very loudly you know and then comes thermometers the diamonds are really very highly sensitive of heat rays that means so they are used in making highly accurate thermometers so as as i said it has a very high melting point and that is why they are highly sensitive sensitive to heat rays as well so they are very very accurate to make thermometers you know the one that measures your temperature yes those thermometers 